The Dinner in Hell Band, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! So clean. So tight. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Impressive. What else? Fantastic. I, every time we hear them, I, I can't have to try to come up with some new adjective that describes awesomeness. And it's easy, though, because they inspire you. The, uh, the crowd's reaction every week is shocking, but... We love it. Yeah, that's incredible. The support coming out for part two of the show. We're glad to see everybody in the audience. You guys look great. Yep. Uh, we are back with part two, the continuation of our crucifixion episode of episode thirty-six. So this will be thirty-seven. Yeah, this is episode thirty-seven, and welcome back for another exciting edition of the Dinner in Hell podcast. The podcast where two amateur historians talk about the atrocious underbelly of history. I am one of your co-hosts, Brad the Impaler, and with me, as always, the August Ron Maiden. Man, August. I have to look that up now, thanks. (laughs) I gotta look up a word. You you always do that to me. The, The whole objective of this is learning. What was that word you had me look up? The, the Iron Club? Cudgel? <laughs> <laughs> Every week I look up new words. Well, yeah, you said it earlier, Ron. We are back for part two, our conclusion of our discussion on crucifixion. We hope we can conclude it. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to try our best. There's a lot of shit in here. It's yeah. pretty fucked up. but We're going to get into traditions. We're going to end up with this backstory of Jesus. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of a discussion on, you know, sort of generalities about Greek and Roman cultures, sort of usage of crucifixion. We're going to talk about um, crucifixion throughout history. Other cultures and nations that did it? Yes, uh, around the world where it sort of comes out. And then we're going we're gonna to bring it home with... Jesus Christos. Yeah, you know it. We're gonna we're gonna talk Joe's about kid. the the probably the most famous execution in all of world history, that of Jesus of Nazareth. More famous than Ted Bundy's execution? I'm just kidding. What day did that happen on? Because I know what a day Jesus has happened on. <laughs> Bla- uh, uh, not Black Friday. Bloody <laughs> Good Sunday, Friday. Sunday, Bloody Sunday, the U2 song? Black, no, <laughs> no, Black that's, Friday. That's about the troubles. I can't believe I just mentioned U2 on this show. <laughs> if Are, you would like to take that cudgel over there and bash me in, after in case the show. You, in case you didn't know, Ron made and never wanted it to slip how much he was a giant U2 fan. U2, to me... I'm sorry. I don't. I don't want to exclude our fans that love you too. So I'm not going to say nothing about you two and their weak ass rhythm section. Oh, you, you know who I hate like almost for no reason, but just something about it is just like terrible to my ears. Is Aerosmith? I hate Aerosmith. <laughs> okay, so of all bands that people love, before we get into our topic, crucifixion. Uh, yeah. Okay. Of all bands. Did, what one did, are you just absolutely done with and never want to hear again? It might be Aerosmith. Really? Yeah. Mine's freaking hey, people, people, kiss, freaking oh. how you doing, people? Yeah, Paul Stanley's <laughs> lisp and shit. Like, <laughs> let's put the S in sex. Like, what? Yeah, kiss, kiss? Is, kiss is not good. They never were. Uh. They're basically the quality of like a suburban neighborhood garage band if it w- was rich enough to afford all that spectacle. I was, I was Kiss didn't do a single musical thing that was interesting or new. <laughs> they wore cool Eat makeup. <laughs> um, yeah, but they, they put not on a good they show. They I'm put gonna, on a good show. I'm not going to say a band isn't good. But I'm going to say I don't like a band. You said Kiss never did anything good. When I mean, come mm, on. I never said they did anything interesting I'll, I'll or roll new. back tape. Well, I, either way, I'll just go ahead and stand by that statement. Because th- Kiss is basically the quality of it. I, I said it. I'm going to hammer this home. <laughs> a suburban neighborhood garage band. That's what Kiss is. That's, that's, the, the, that's their level of nuance. 
Let's show them everything you got. I think the only thing, the only time I like that's Kiss, something anybody's uncle could write. The only time I like Kiss songs is when other like badass metal bands cover them. You know, like Anthrax or like yeah, I Melvin's. Bet, yeah, I bet there's some good covers of Detroit Rock City. God of Thunder has been covered by like Entombed and like Melvin's. Oh, so heavy. Okay, Crucifixion. Let's get into the uh, what a Crucifixion really is, Brad, in case you didn't listen to part one and you're listening to part two first. Crucifixion well, is when a body is displayed naked, naked, either tied or nailed to some form of apparatus that causes you to die eventually eventually by asphyxiation not quick not quick maybe days a tree although in the japanese tradition which you'll hear about it is pretty quick yeah yeah not not slow are you foreshadowing with me are you foreshadowing with me god damn it oh yeah i read that book and finally <laughs> uh, the one type of japanese is fast the other type of japanese crucifixion is slow that's a teaser. Stick around. Yeah, it's good. It's good. But we're kicking things off, talking about crucifixion generally among the Greco-Roman cultures. My favorite type of crucifixion, probably, hands down. Yeah. Now, it, I'm just kidding. <laughs> during then, you know, classical antiquity, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, they that was probably the heyday of crucifixion, we'll go ahead and call it. This is the, like, the golden age for it. This is the prime of crucifixion. Yeah. Also, you know, from antiquity, the same period, there were plenty of other cultures that were in the mix, too. Uh, Macedonians, Carthaginians, and Persians among them. Carthaginians, you'll find, are, were pretty savage. Savage life. Yeah, and, and though the Greeks did crucify people, it wasn't super common, and they really didn't like it. It did not fit the sensibilities of the Greek cultures. They they all thought it was detestable to do as well as receive. So it was rarely used. It was used for the absolute worst, yeah. heinous stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the Romans, they would just do it because he like, had a full head of hair. Or shadow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was done also by uh, the king of Judea. Alexander Janaeus, who crucified 800 rebel Pharisees at once, somewhere around 100 BC, right in the middle of Jerusalem, right? Dead center in the middle of the city. I hate to put you on the spot, but what the hell is a Pharisee? It's a type of uh, religious leader, like a religious movement amongst Jews. Okay. I'm amateur. So they're it's like true. Yeah. Um, the Greeks... I just I wanted to ask you... What kind of crime do you think would the Greek crucify your ass for? We're talking about the worst ones back then. Because mm-hmm. back then, I mean, probably infanticide, maybe. Well, not in Sparta. Isn't that what it's called, infanticide? If you kill babies? No, no. <laughs> See, this would probably have been shit that would have challenged like the rulers, mainly. They got a very different conception of what oh, worst is. Treason. Yeah, pr- okay. probably treason. I forget these rulers think that they're actual gods yeah, amongst yeah. men. Mm-hmm. That foreshadow. foreshadow. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many times I can foreshadow next episode right. into this episode. Yeah, if, if you do the first person to tweet in and guess it wins probably nothing. <laughs> Every time we say foreshadow, that's a clue of what's next ep- episode's about. And uh, yeah, uh, Macedonians got in the mix. Uh, Alexander the Great, everyone's you know favorite ancient guy. I think he's so cool. He did stuff like uh, you know after he conquered the Phoenician city of Tyre, you know modern day Lebanon. He held a mass crucifixion for two thousand survivors of the siege. The- <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, when you think about survivors of the siege, you think people most likely to survive that are probably women. You're elderly. You're, you know, youngsters. So, yeah, Alexander the Great, just as shitty as any other ancient leader. Okay. I got a fun fact for you that's going to just bring this fucking show to a bummer halt. Um, Alexander the Great. To, you're talking about like we're talking about one of the top 30 iron maiden songs right yeah uh-huh. was it on seventh son or somewhere in time 
Uh, I think it, I think it's on Seventh Son. Alex I don't think it's on Seventh Son. the Great. His name struck fear in the hearts of men. Right, yeah. something like that. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, Iron Maiden. Check them out. They, their history. I learned yeah, a lot of history you know. from. Dude, how many rhyme of the ancient Mariner Jeopardy questions have you gotten right because of Iron Maiden? Seriously, I, I don't know. At least Albatross. Okay, um, Alexander Janius, Janaeus. Yeah, the king of Judea. This dude, well, I got a little freaking uh, tidbit of information on this son of a bitch. Oh, lay it on me. This guy had, he had the 800 rebels crucified? Yeah, yep. Yeah, you, you left it at that, right? Yes, I did. <laughs> but had their wives and children's cut throats cut in front of them so they could see first at before they got crucified. Jesus. God damn. This is Alexander Janaeus. That's while he ate with his mistresses, his group of mistresses, his harem of women. I forgot what they call it, like a, but it's mistresses. Damn. Yeah, that's Alexander Janaeus. You know what? Might get his head. He wants to get his head chiseled on the dinner in hell, Mount Rushmore. I think he's, he's trying. A strong case. That's pretty awful. Yeah, that's 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 pretty. We're brutal. gonna we're gonna crucify eight hundred rebels. But first, we're going to go through and find their families and kill them in front of them first. Like That is ice cold. That yeah, shit is ice cold. Freaking bastard. So now you know all about a little fun fact about this Alexander Janaeus, I like listeners out there. Also, Carthaginians. They saved crucifixion, though, for failure generals. So, like, if you go off to war, get your ass kicked, and you come marching back to Carthage with your tail between your legs, they nail your ass to a cross when you get back. Dude, that's when you just find a spear and just line it up with your throat and just fall on it like, stab yourself. Don't even get on that elephant. Don't even ride that elephant home. No, you know what I'd fucking do is I would just take all my troops and become like a rogue warlord on the fringes of the kingdom. If I knew I was coming back to certain death. Tell your soldiers, be like, if we go back, they're going to kill us all. Yeah, exactly. We're going to stand and fight. <laughs> yeah, let's seize this like town way off on the outskirts and we'll just defend that and try yeah. to start like a rival kingdom. Yeah. Maybe they're weak enough. Like maybe Carthage will be weak enough to like negotiate and let us live. Yeah. That's what I'd do. <laughs> Were but, I a failure Carthaginian general. Dude, Carthaginians. That's awful. <laughs> like, the um, yeah. The Mongols did that. Like, if you sucked at fighting, they just kill you. Like, yeah. uh, was it... Um, well, they'd kill the, a 10 percent. They'd kill all of you. Like, this? if your 10-man unit sucked, they'd kill you all. If a whole 10-man uh, unit sucked out of a 100-man unit, they'd kill all 100. And it'd just go all the way up. They'd, like, just slaughter hundreds of their own people. Like, Stalingrad? Like, they would, like if you, if you run back like retreated that you, you they would just shoot their own men running back mm -hmm. like don't even bother retreating we'll shoot your ass yeah there's there was the eastern front was brutal also foreshadowing <laughs> persians uh, yeah all those cultures in ancient can antiquity got down with crucifixion but the undisputed king the unified heavyweight title holder of crucifixion is rome Whoa, you, you didn't mention Persians. Oh, shit, I forgot about there, them. That, now, if that just shows you just how intensely dominant in the Crucifixion League the Romans were. I yeah. forgot about the Persians. And the Persians had the most humane out of the list, wouldn't you say? Yeah, if I had to get crucified and I had my choice of culture to do it, it would be Persian. Hell yeah. You know why? Because they must be time travelers who listen to this show yep. because they cut their heads off they've first. gotten information from the future mm -hmm. um as a matter of fact if i had to choose any execution method we've ever discussed on this show it would be persian crucifixion i think brad quick, a quick just boop, and your head Tell, off and you're good yeah did we, th the sword were, blow were you clear they behead you first yes they behead yeah. you then they display you on the cross i'm honestly not worried about anything that happens to my body after i die if i'm beheaded yeah do whatever yeah so if i gotta get executed in some way 
that the show discusses a quick beheading probably sadly is what i would have to choose <laughs> would you rather be shot in the head or beheaded maybe beheaded you'd be able to like look around for a little bit like, oh, yeah but then that would be like no that's true they had they did a test like one scientist got condemned to die and his like scientist buddy was like can i like be right there to like catch his head and he said when he caught his head, the guy like rolled his I was rolling his eyes around, looked at him, and was able to bl- blink three times. They had a code. He died. Yes. Oh my god, that's awesome! Uh, you ever remember the uh, sacrifice? I think it was in the French Revolution. The this sec- the sec- I do have to qualify that as saying I did not look that up right now, okay. and it may not be true. Okay, but I, I have sec- heard that. Yeah. Er- might be an uh, urban legend. Yeah, don't don't put quotation marks around my name in that information because I'm not positive about it. <laughs> Remember the um, sacrifice scene in uh, Apocalypto when yes, the head vividly. is like rolling around and he could see like the kid laughing as his head's dying. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just fucked up. So yeah, Persians cut your head off, then they put you up on a crucifix. Mm-hmm. Um, Rome. Yeah, they had a uh, couple unique quirks. It made Roman crucifixion special. They, uh, you coming down to us from, you know, our boy Plutarch and Seneca the Younger, that the Romans would force the victims to carry the crossbar with them to the upright post where it would later be attached. So, you know, they often show Jesus carrying his whole cross. Probably didn't go down that way. He was probably carrying the crossbar. Yeah. You know, that's a Why? little bit... It's because the carrying the cross is honestly impossible. How heavy is it? They were... The whole cross weighed more than 300 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, so you're not getting too far with it. Yeah. Um, the cross beam weighed about 100 pounds. A lot more manageable. Yeah. Carry that shit. Yeah, so that that's a particular um, Roman quirk. It, also for the Romans, crucifixion started off only as a punishment for slaves and slave rebellions. Now, if, if you'll recall from our previous episode about Emperor Nero. Yeah, this he, dude. Uh, yeah, he, he was the first to kick off a real big time Christian persecution. And he would take his dinner in his garden that was just full of crucified christians that were on fire illuminating his courtyard yeah so he could eat at night nom, nom, nom. really enjoy himself Die. eat fucking, a whole pig with my face fucking sick <laughs> he just puts a pig on a plate and just eats it with his face that's nero just so you know it's documented yeah if you go back and listen he does dress in animal skins and do some real sick shit nero was a sweet episode now before we get to the the undisputed star of this episode. We're going to take a quick tour around the globe and throughout time to study, uh, you know, other instances of crucifixion and how it went through the ages. And uh, you might not know this, but crucifixion is really motherfucking big in Japan during a period of time. Uh, it got a late start, though. It came to Japan around 1475 after a period of hundreds of years in which no one was put to death in Japan whatsoever. So imagine going from nobody's ever put to death to what we're about to describe and you already know about. Like that's, I'm going to clue you into some foreshadowing there. <laughs> Did the Japanese ominous shit? Did the Japanese uh, make them do it nude as well? Not in the, the pictures they, they that picks. I've seen of this. I heard they put like a little black rectangle over the over it, <laughs> censoring it out so you can't tell that it's a man's genitalia. Yeah, that's true. Like they put a little pics, tiny one, like a little tiny black. Yeah, if you, somebody out there knows what the hell we're talking about, someone crafty, sadly, <laughs> someone gross, uh, or pixelated. <laughs> Yeah, see, this th- there's photographs of this. Did they well, co- one of which I will put in the show notes. So only click those if, as always, only click them if you, you're you're probably going to see a dead body on the other side of it if it's recent. <laughs> God damn it! Um, I heard they made him go nude on the cross and they covered him with like squids and like bullfrogs and shit. <laughs> you ever seen that? I have seen it's, that. Okay, <laughs> people might know what we mean. 
Uh, that stuff. I do not know why that's popular. Uh, eels. Handful of eels coming out. Okay. That was a real gulp. It was yeah. not our sound and to, you know the Japanese uh, ingenuity took crucifixion and made a couple changes. Okay, they to, modified it. Yeah. I suggested uh, doing it on iron because the sun would heat it up. These yeah, Japanese, that would be pretty bad. But these Japanese step it up even more. Let's <laughs> see. So. In Japan, a victim condemned to be crucified would be suspended on a single upright pole with two cross beams, one for the legs, one for the arms. So, I mean, again, uh, this is a picture I'm going to put in there. So if you want to see it, go ahead and click. And they would then be pierced with a spear several times in each side and then finished off with a spear through the throat. So, that this flavor of Japanese crucifixion is is not days long. It's moments. They they immediately get stabbed to death with a spear. Do the people that do the stabbing with the spear are they like the city leaders or something? Do you have any info on that? I it would probably be the same people who have performed these executions throughout all of time, which or, would be cops. There are cops <laughs> doing this. Or what about? Um, Am I thinking of the, when Jesus, I think the Roman leaders all had to go and poke Jesus? I, no. I, I don't know where I, I No, that. you're thinking of the assassination of Caesar, where they were like, no, but like, we can't go down for this, so like every senator has to mur- stab him once, so really? we're all, all murderers. Okay. Yeah, I think that was Maybe Julius that's... Caesar. Okay. The thing about the Japanese crucifixion is you weren't alive on the cross for days, but they would leave you up there for days on display afterward. So it's a lot more similar to the Persian dead? angle. Yes, yeah, they'd leave you up, up there dead. Yeah. So, like, do you, did they stab him in the neck for a death stab or did yeah. just a, like a slow bleed stab? No, it was a death stab. Like jugular? Yeah. Okay. They'd, as soon as you were up there, step, step, step in the like side, kidney. step, step, step in the side, and then boom, coup de gras. Finish you off. Are your hands tied or are they nailed? They're, I think they're tied. Again, we, we'll, we'll consult the picture on that one. God damn it, Japanese. Hello, Tokyo, by the way. They're Tokyo listeners. They're out there. Yeah, now there was another flavor of maybe tokyo crucifixion where, you know, they would put you up on a cross on the beach and they wouldn't stab you in this variety but you were far enough down the beach that when the tide came in it would be just barely enough for you to get your mouth above the water to breathe and then the tide would go back out again and you'd be hanging on the cross still then the tide comes back in and you can barely just get your face out of the water to breathe when the waves are going away. Splashing. Yeah, and that cycle repeats until you get too tired to pull your head above the water and you drown on the cross. Sometimes so, that one does last a matter of days. So you are on this crucifix. Mm-hmm. High tide comes in. Mm-hmm. Each wave brings in more. is deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. Until the, are you fully underwater when there's a wave i bet yeah so you gotta hold your breath mm-hmm. was, good, good luck sleeping through that one yeah good luck getting some rest on that one yep and when that's and then you eventually you get so tired that you can't get your head above the water and you drown and you know this type of crucifixion in japan continued well into the grant administration in 1871 when it was finally made illegal now i think there were still shoguns because in our samurai episode mm-hmm we look up the, the last year of a Shogun. Yes. And I think that's when we brought up Grant first on this show. Yeah. If you didn't know who Grant is, Grant's the alcoholic that got named president. Yeah. <laughs> one of the alcoholics that's He's the one. named president. He's the one that liked to drink that got to be president. That's yeah. <laughs> the one. That's funny. Now, uh, the Persian tradition sort of also still continues. Several people were executed by crucifixion in Saudi Arabia in the 2000s. So it, it's still the, the Persian variety of beheading and then a crucifixion. Um, crucifixion is still a legal punishment in Iran, Sudan, and the United Arab Emirates. 
Saudi Arabia currently has a young Shiite man sentenced to crucifixion. He was uh, um, sentenced um, to beheading and crucifixion in May of 2014. Mm -hmm. He's still in Saudi Arabian jail. Like, humanitarian people, everyone's again, like, come on, no. Like, he didn't even do anything really bad, but he's his dad was like a Shiite rebel or something. Mm. So they got his kid, and they're going to do it to his kid for something minor or something. And like two other guys. Or the, the fact like, that they haven't done it yet maybe means that they're just threatening it. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, I, this is yeah, three but, years ago, May. Yeah, but take this as the dinner in hell, you know, issuance of knowledge that crucifixion is still happening. <laughs> yeah. That was the point of it. Yeah. There, there's currently people waiting at, for it now. Um, another case in which it may be also happening is there's a, a militia that fights in sort of the ongoing Ukrainian conflict called the Azov Battalion, which are basically full of, like, neo-Nazis. And uh, supposedly, uh, they crucified and burned alive, uh, uh, you know, a Russian-backed rebel, and they sent a video of this to a pro-Russian hacking group. So, so, I mean, this shit is still going on in the world God today. damn. But the wait is over. It's time to discuss Jesus of Nazareth. I've heard of him. <laughs> like at Easter. Sounds pretty familiar. Might sound familiar to a lot of you out there. I see, like, signs in the lawn. G- he is risen. Mm-hmm. Like, he's running for, like, city council and shit. <laughs> I support Jesus. I'd probably vote for him, though. We support Jesus over here. Okay, thank you. Now I know he supports Jesus. Everyone else is a goddamn Satanist. (laughs) Yeah, but so in case you don't know, the man we're talking about was a Galilean Jew who went on to become a you know a public preacher and uh, an important prophet to both Christians and Muslims. Um, Muslims believe jesus was not crucified but ascended bodily into heaven and muslims also do not believe that jesus was divine in any way they think he was just just a prophet like say equivalent to his cousin john the baptist ascended bodily into heaven what does that mean that means he didn't die on earth he just like his whole body and everything just went up to heaven yeah but at the same time, he's not divine. <laughs> like, I would think that's kind of pretty some denying characteristics is getting sucked into heaven. Well, for Christians, by laser um, beams. Mary, the mother of Jesus, not divine, and she ascended bodily into heaven. Oh, I, I didn't say, say she, she wasn't. Sex. <laughs> I didn't say she wasn't a dime. I said she wasn't divine. Don't talk about Jesus' mom like that, bro. <laughs> Let's just not even touch on it, man. It's his sacred mother. Good idea. Um, yeah, um, and Muslims also, generally speaking, believe that Jesus was the product of a virgin birth. That's crazy. But, hey, that's cool. Yeah, what are you going to do? People love it. <laughs> um, the thing about Jesus, though, is, he, you know, he was... A rebel, like a radical. He was shaking things up like crazy. And you do not do that like Jesus did without making some enemies. I mean, you got you got freaking people getting crucified all around you. You've got freaking brazen bulls. You've got scapisms around Mm -hmm. the corner. Mm -hmm. Why on earth are you going to go up and ruffle feathers and be like, no, listen to me. There's Jesus over here. I'm preaching this shit. Some new word fuck this roman shit like like who would ever fucking go against the law dude when when you're born into a brutal world you don't notice it think of it we live in a world where at any moment we could all die and the entire world could be over we were born with a gun pointed right into our faces in the form of nuclear weapons right yeah the russians yeah we ever since we've been born there's basically been a gun right at the back of our head every second of every day and when was the last time you thought about it and when was the last time you thought about dying in a nuclear holocaust uh the last time i saw like cnn (laughs) yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like you're born into a brutal world, you you don't know any better. Um, I I get what you're saying though. It does yeah. seem awful risky. <laughs> yeah, like um, 
And he wasn't. He didn't seem like he was trying to get rich. It wasn't anything like a modern sort of cult operation. So he, I mean, he was just doing it for the, for the sake of it. Just for he, what he, it was his thing. It was his passion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, to really understand how this sort of gets going, you really need to take at the uh, the events in the week leading up to his execution. That's what I want to know. I want to learn oh, what the hell went down. Yeah, this is like after like we found the body, and now we're going to get the background in the Law & Order episode. You know, dun dun. Yeah, so what kicks all this off is Jesus riding triumphantly back into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. I thought you were going to say a Clydesdale. (laughs) He's got a cold brew. Like, (laughs) this bud's for you, Jesus. Jesus is sitting there fucking riding on the back of a donkey playing a guitar. He's like finger picking it. No pick at all, just fingers. He's like... People follow me back no, to no, no. the town. You know what he'd be like? He'd be like, because he's riding on a donkey, my mind immediately went to the uh, character of El Mariachi. He <laughs> rides on. in with like his hat held low, like the donkey's slow. He's, <laughs> he's got, got like a, a guitar case. <laughs> a shitty like piece of straw in his mouth. Yeah. It's like, man, I've seen things. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus got his disciples behind him and shit. Yeah, he's they're like... like they're walking slow motion they're like walking the dust rising the disciples are like god damn it'd be nice to sit on a donkey wouldn't it wouldn't yeah. it guys yeah no we will walk jesus cool yeah but it doesn't sound super glamorous does it but there's a jewish prophecy that says the future king of the jews will ride into jerusalem on a donkey did you just foreshadow me God, you <laughs> snuck it in. Nice work. Smooth. I told you I read that book. I, I foreshadowed this moment yeah. by telling you I read the book. It's crazy. His disruption due to that. I mean, you can imagine how that would shake out in a Jewish community. They've been waiting for I don't know how long for their Messiah to ride in on a donkey. And here comes this young, brash street preacher rolling in on a donkey. It's basically Babe Ruth calling a shot, sort of. You know what I mean? Like, it's that sort of aggressive like ostentatious behavior like that must have been shocking to the people in jerusalem at that time like nostradamus predicted hitler yeah a red-headed man from the west or something like yeah, it's, it's coming from make, yeah nostradamus like, was just a weirdo <laughs> nostradamus is like a man will arrive on donkey back mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that's what happened and it d- doesn't stop there uh later on at the second temple in Jerusalem, Jesus and you know, presumably his posse rolls in, and he doesn't like that there's people inside of the temple conducting business. Money changers, I believe, is the word they use in the translation of the Bible I'm the most familiar with. But basically, you know, anytime you, you know Jesus rolls in and just loses his shit, he just wrecks the whole place. It's like a bazaar. Like all shops, all in. Like, yeah, and he's yeah. just going to town, trashing their shit, and like hitting people, fighting them, and kicking them out. He goes on a rampage in this temple, basically against what everybody else is perfectly okay with happening. So life as everyone knew it was shops and rows. Of yeah, bizarre, in there, or, boom. That's, yeah. you can do that. And in here this comes temple. Jesus, all dressed in all black with Molotov cocktails and shit, like <laughs> on a fucking busted. hog on a Harley. No, on a fucking donkey. His donkey's wearing all black, too. He's an anarchist freaking donkey. He's like, they're, he's running through. He's like, fuck, corporate Yeah, let's bullshit. Basic, yeah, I, the way I look at this is Jesus basically going into the temple, seeing a Starbucks there, and breaking the windows. <laughs> when, when um, in part one, we started talking about Jesus in the uh, part one. And yeah. I and I said I know, and you were like Jesus is pretty cool, dude. You were like I, you know, I'm not sure about the hocus pocus, but or whatever we said, but yeah. And you're, I go, I know why you're gonna think he's a cool dude. Okay. I'll tell you why later. And it's this is now because of the smashing shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty much exactly why I think he's a cool dude. <laughs> so yeah, he he's. I mean, imagine. You know, fucking like Pat Robertson or Billy Graham going out into the street and smashing windows in a riot. That's basically what Jesus was doing. Gotta stop letting gays marry. 
or something like some yeah. kind of passion he'd have. I don't know. What. Yeah, except except Jesus stuck up for disenfranchised and marginalized people. That's what these people don't understand about their own religion, I guess. Like Jesus hung out with like hookers and lepers all day. That's not that was Jesus wouldn't be ashamed of that. He'd tell you that's what everyone should do. Yeah. Like the lowest among you are the holiest and shit like that. They, I don't know how they forget that when they're rolling around on their private jets, but I don't know. What is that Kermit meme where it's like, that's not my, that's none of my business. He's yeah, drinking but, like a martini or something. Yeah. It's, it's none of my business. Tea. Some like sun tea or something. Uh, so like at this time, the elders were in charge of keeping civilization like in check, right? Yeah. They're the elders, like the elders of any, you know, community are. They're heavily invested in the status quo. Yeah. Or they've lived their whole lives preparing for this, and they don't want it to change because that's not their fucking plan. They've yeah. been prepared for this. They're in a good position. Order. Everything's working for them. Yeah. yeah. They don't want anything to change now. Jesus, real different. He is does not like the status quo. He wants to make crazy changes all across the board. He's declared himself the king of the Jews. That means... He he's basically saying all Jews, like, are my people. Listen to me now. I'm in charge. Heads up. Pass it on. That you know the king of Judea that like you report to that Roman guy. Uh. Uh-uh. You know the other king. You know the Romans. Nuh uh. Like that shit ain't ain't you. I'm your king. Yeah. Check it out. Nobody like that. I heard the Romans eventually crowned him at the end foreshadowing <laughs> foreshadow uh it, so judas iscariot let's get into that dude cool name does sound pretty pretty boss maybe has influenced some artists down the line <laughs> metal bands judas priest indeed great band love it what's judas screaming story? for vengeance freaking so he he's an apostle of Jesus's. He's one of his followers um, until Snitch that he is Snitch. Snitch Judas, a little bitch. Yeah. Yeah. No snitching. Snitch that is ass a, we, bitch. I think we can say no snitching is a firm dinner in hell policy. Yeah. Yeah. We don't no snitch snitching. on each other ever. No. Uh-uh. Snitchers get stitches. Yeah. Little bitch. Yeah, but he bitches out and sells out Jesus for 30 silver coins. Yep. That's I, it. I looked Not up. Not even gold. I looked up today what's 30 silver, the value of 30 silver silver coins equals to about 18 bucks. So, yeah, think about that when you're freaking thinking about Jesus on the cross. It's 18 bucks. That's not even like... U.S. That you couldn't even take your girl out to like a casual dining chain restaurant on that. That's some bitch shit. Judas... Uh uh-uh. uh, no. I don't fuck with him. Uh, I think it's more than eighteen bucks, but I was just trying to be <laughs> sassy. I had no idea, so I was just gonna roll with whatever came out uh, of your mouth. I didn't tell you otherwise. That's how I wanted you to believe it. Yeah. Wonder- now, in what is described by Christians as the agony in the garden, Jesus, you know, supposedly stricken with knowledge of exactly what he was about to go through. I mean, he supposedly already had known that, for example, Judas would betray him. So he's praying in the in this garden, and he's praying long and hard for a way out of the situation. He and knows he's going to be he's, he's sentenced already. No, no, but he supposedly knows all of this because he's God. Okay. Yeah, so that's why I'm he knows saying it's suppos- coming. supposedly. He yeah. knows his end is coming? Yeah, and how supposedly it's gonna be. he knows he's going to die. So he's he's like, knew Ju- right. he knows Ju- Judas betrays him. He knows he knows everything. Judas, why have you done this? Because I was broke, man. Shit. I got bills to pay. This fish and bread, man. I want some beef, some camel, snake, something exotic, something different than bread and fish. <laughs> If anything, it'd probably be that one asshole from the Matrix where he's like talking about the steak dinner. I know the steak's fake. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I want to be someone famous, god damn it. Yeah, that's some Judas shit. That's he's on some Judas sold out Jesus for like a fine meal. 
Yeah, basically. <laughs> We're freaking. What are we doing here? We are imagining it. Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, so so Jesus is praying for a way out of it. He doesn't want to do it. But Judas comes in and famously, you know, betrays him with a kiss. What do you mean? He like, walks in hey. and like he's like, hey, soldiers, like that Jesus dude, like so you know who he is to arrest him. He's the guy that I walk up and kiss. Oh. So he walks up and plants one on Jesus and then the soldiers are like, all right, that's that Jesus. Fucker. Let's go get him. He looks it's li- not like they can put up like they didn't have like character sketch artists or whatever i heard peter <laughs> composite was, sketch artists i mean i heard peter was standing there like what no kiss what the f- what i thought we were boys too hey, where's my hug yeah like yeah. just <laughs> just a handshake knuckle bump yeah that's some that's I'll odd. Kiss you next time peter believe me you don't want me kissing you right now Pete. yeah <laughs> Pete, you don't want me kissing you that's not part of the plan that's Although, my judas impression yeah that's a good one i like it I, I'm going to forever hear anything in Judas's voice like that in my head forever. <laughs> so, yeah, the soldiers roll in, and Jesus gets arrested, and uh, he gets taken to the house of the high priest, um, and he basically spends that night being you know, beaten and humiliated all night long by the sort of ch- the 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 priest the 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 current Jewish religious leaders the the high ups basically like you think you're king huh yeah this cudgel <laughs> good thanks. good use thanks bringing it back i got one next to me here that's replica <laughs> yeah so he basically spends all night getting his ass beat and you know berated and sworn at i assume subject to any number of terrible humiliations i like to imagine people's um rotten vegetables being thrown at them that's my fantasy that's <laughs> probably happened their waste bin of their toilet fuck you although if you think about it i bet you they didn't let a whole lot of food go uneaten then yeah we talked about that before i think but some shit gets moldy true, true. Bo- bottom of the bin Or it gets, like, infested or something. Mm -hmm. Now, he's then taken to the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin is sort of the Jewish, like, religious court. And he basically is showboating, arrogant, and, like, very rebellious throughout the entire court proceedings. He refused to answer their questions, or he would, like, answer their questions with questions, misdirecting them, basically, like, thumbing his nose at all of them, telling, like, disrespecting. I heard I heard it went down, like, ask me questions, and I'll, and, I, and I'll do him, okay? Are you the son of Yahweh? I don't know, are you? Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly what it was ask like. Ask me another one. Uh, do you think you're the king of the Jews? I don't know, do you? Yeah. <laughs> that's my Jesus impression and uh, Yeah, that's I, I that's how I sort of imagine it. Yeah. Um and, and he knew it was a sham trial and he didn't want to, you know, give him this fucking satisfaction. He does though during the course of the trial declare himself the Messiah though. He says like, "Yeah, I'm back. Like I'm here to save all the Jews. What of it?" He d- he does sort of front like that at least in the trial. I'm sorry I smashed the storefronts. I'm sorry about that. But that admission was enough for them to convict him of blasphemy, which, if you'll remember, in highly religious communities, is generally frowned upon and punished with death. Blasphemy. So now here in the Bible. For whatever reason, the accounts try to acquit Pontius Pilate of guilt, saying, like, oh, he wasn't the one who was really driving, like, the execution. They make it, like, out like the Jews did it more. They definitely wanted him dead, but Pilate also wanted him dead from the very beginning. There was no, like, we have to find some way to save him. None of that bullshit's real. Right. Uh... Pontius Pilate has no... Yeah, they claim he tried to let Jesus go twice, but um, that happened. 
but whenever it happened, the whole crowd was full of people that were instructed to not select Jesus to go free. They were instructed to select Barabbas, the murderer, to go free. So there's two men to be crucified or on trial? Yeah, and he's like, one of these guys, I'm going to, as like a token of my generosity to the community, I'll let you pick one of these two to survive. And then Who's it going to be? Yeah, but the whole crowd was full of people who were told exactly who to select, and they did not go away from that. Pilate definitely wanted to execute Jesus, too. He was yeah. in on the whole sham from the beginning. The murder guy was like a guy that killed someone that everyone hated anyways. Like, he killed, like, the, the local blacksmith that was, like, a rotten shit anyways. His prices are way too high for freaking horseshoes. His swords suck. Guy insults me when I go there. He doesn't even want my money. Yeah, probably something like and that. The, Barabbas killed his ass. So they're like, good job, Barabbas. Whatever his name is. Yeah, so, you know, after the trials have occurred and Jesus is officially condemned both by the Sanhedrin and the official, like, Roman, you know, client king structure, he is first scourged, which, I mean, maybe we'll... Drop a clip in from the Passion of the Christ. I don't know. You can go look. I'm not going to. You go look that up on your own. It's pretty fucking gratuitous. Scourged is whipped with the cat of nine tails? Yeah. The yeah. hooked whips mm-hmm. with hooks? Yeah. So, I mean, imagine you're talking about, A, just the, the bad enough getting beat with it. But, just, you know, supposedly the ends of these strands of lever were filled with... Barbs? Sharp barbs or, like, glass, chunks of glass that would get embedded in the flesh with the impact and then torn out as Rip away. the whip was retracted. Thanks, yes. man. Thanks for really jazzing that up for me. Yeah, so that, that's step one of what begins of actually Jesus' execution here. Okay, first is the beating. Yep, and, and after that he is condemned to walk the Via Dolorosa, or you know the, that's Latin for the way of suffering, to Calvary which is a hill outside the city of Jerusalem, which will be the place of his execution. Where the cross will be posted. Yeah, that's where the likely a single... Or, you know, he he wasn't crucified alone. He was crucified with two other criminals. So there were probably three upright posts set up on the hill or more yeah it could be a whole freaking yeah, like 20 could have been 50 of them. yeah but three on this hill yes and uh jesus would have been forced to carry his cross beam there after having been scourged i imagine there's a six foot hole dug probably like for a fence post and the the beam that you are attached to the upright beam is probably laying down and then you get and then they stick it in the hole and and then gravity suck. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could take the cross out, put them on it, and then and get then ropes, everyone. Up. Yeah, and then clunk, and it holds itself up. Yeah, I think it's probably six foot. something like that. We could crucify somebody. I'm telling you, man, if we had to, we, yeah, got, we, we can do it. Yeah, we need engineering degrees. Yeah, I got poles to hold a digger in a garage. Yeah. It would just take take some elbow grease. Some shoulder workout. Yeah, so along the way, I mean, I think some of the interesting things from this account from the Gospels, I mean, and you know, not sure of its historic accuracy, but uh, this is where in the, he interacts with some women along the way, and we get some grim Jesus quotes. This shit is just good writing, and I thought maybe we'd pop it in there, some good ancient writing. He's talking to women along the way? Like, yeah, because hey. people are out to watch. This is a public deal. Let me guess, he's like... Normally, I'm not covered in blood. Normally, my skin is intact on my back. Here's my number. Three. <laughs> my my back's normally smooth and beautiful, but today it's a little ripped apart. Yeah. Hi, yes, I'm see. Jesus. Still got these abs, though. You see on those all the statues, Jesus is never like a little flabby or scrawny. He's always like real cut. And we've mentioned in the opening of the show, I believe, and part one, is that you're nude on the cross. So he's like, normally I got some type of clothes on. Yeah, I don't usually. Not dripping with blood nude. Hang brain this much. Normally I'm, I'm manicured a <laughs> little bit better than this, but I've been a little a, dusty. Yeah, I'm a little. I'm if I fall a couple times, people make a real big deal out of it, though. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's talking to this woman, and, and I, we're making jokes, but this. I mean, we've described this to you already. It's 
horrifying. It is like living nightmare type shit going on. Um, and he talks to these women and he says, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? I don't know what the frick that even means. It's- Basically, he's just saying, I see you crying for me now. Don't bother doing that, because soon the whole world is going to be so horrible, everyone will want to die. Wow. Thank you. That's like, it's. they say Jesus died when he was like 33, but it seems like really promising, like teenage poetry, right? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, in the exact methodology of Jesus' execution, we, we don't know for sure. It, it can't be determined exactly. But... We know it was an incredibly horrific affair with dozens of followers and devotees mourning what was assuredly a slow and absolutely brutal death. Mythologically speaking, there are any number of events that have been said to have coincided with the event itself, such as you know three full hours of darkness, earthquakes... And the opening of the grave of dead saints. I heard the smoke monster from Lost was flying around the village, like <laughs> looking at people's faces and then just vanishing. Mm-hmm. And I don't even think any of those are necessary to convey the impact of his martyrdom. I mean, the in- look at the impact Christianity has on the modern world. Look at what. You know, Catholicism had for what would later become of Rome. I mean, Jesus had a massive impact on the world. Think of how much. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say like think how much like revenue the Christian religion has just generated, just jobs alone, like Da Vinci painting paintings he made money Mm -hmm. like all the you know it all just branches out through time to now the catholic church what this rebel spawned is now the single richest organization on the face of the earth like the vatican has its own it's its own nation it's its own country yeah yeah Yeah. the smallest country no i think there's some countries that have like one person that lives there yeah (laughs) But yeah, I mean, <laughs> they this, listen this, to our show. <laughs> yeah, this person so important, so historic on the cross. Um, the gospel has legendary descriptions of it, but we can't know for sure. If if we go by what was most common at the time, it was likely that Jesus was crucified on a cross with a crossbar, but that that crossbar would be at the very top of the cross. Not, so his head could flop back? Mm-hmm, not quite like what's described. Like a capital T, uppercase mm-hmm. T. And we mentioned the crown earlier as foreshadowing. Oh, he got crowned in the end as a king? Yeah, according to the Gospels, in order to mock Jesus, the Roman soldiers placed a crown made of thorns <laughs> on his head once they reached Calvary. Like from a rose bush? Mm-hmm. Like you just take the branches and bend it around? Yeah. What else has thorns? Oh, there's trees out there with gnarly thorns. Yeah, those long could have been spiky something ones like that. I imagine it was not pleasant <laughs> in any way. Romans, what do they mean by when Rome do as the Romans? Do they mean like, hey, let's be brutally fucking violent and fucking kill and eat suckling babies? Fuck it, it's Rome, man. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I guess that's what it does. <laughs> that's, that's what I learned from this show. If I go to Rome, I'm bringing like weapons. Yeah, an armor, and I'm and not like, committing treason. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna try I'm to avoid being enslaved. Playing by the rules in Rome <laughs> and Venice and wherever in Italy. If we ever go on vacation to Sicily. Like, we, we talked about going to Pompeii one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, we freaking taking swords with us. Yeah, because I am not willing to deal with any of this. To mess. fall on ourselves in case they try to 
sentence us we'll just take ourselves faster you're not gonna freaking draw and quarter me son of a bitch yeah would we just be you know what we would have to do before we travel is just get like a tooth hollowed out and filled with cyanide yes yeah <laughs> crunch it uh, done yeah just have a necklace charm it's a little cyanide pill there you go but that's that's about it he had one more you want to close it on his last he said something to to god oh yeah the other the other grim quote from from uh, jesus at the end of his life that comes from the gospel is and i think we'll go out on this you know where you can reach us my god my god why have you forsaken me Brought to you by Bush Beer. Thank you to the Dinner in Hell band, crushing it as ever. Thank you for the attentive audience, alert and attentive. Yeah, and just honestly, a pleasure to be around. And our internet audience, thank you for listening. We appreciate you. We love you. A diverse crowd lately. Looking, looking forward, at you, Italy. We're looking forward to a possible first tour stop in Ashburn, Virginia. We, there's a chance we might do a. There may be enough reason draw to fill up a theater there we're actually contemplating uh, a, an actual tour stop at the old ox brewery there on goldford road yeah well, i mean could happen you never know thanks we might the, be in the neighborhood thanks to brad thanks to soundcloud for hosting us yeah, itunes you twitter much. youtube thanks to brad they've been Bridget. really great you yeah. know i know <laughs> thank you good night thank you <laughs>